Hey there Unsolved Mysteries fans, Wayward Legacy back at you with another video. So uh, the case I'm going to do today, um, you know, I've seen this case quite a few times, I've watched it back, I've uh, read a few th different things on it, and uh, you know, it's you know it's definitely one of those cold cases where you know it can have a few different theories, uh, you know, uh, it's it's been riddled by uh, one, one contradiction covered up after another, you know, it's one of those cases that, uh, you know, nobody really knows what happened. Uh, this so this is the case of uh, Kurt Silva. So basically, I've got a unsolved mysteries wiki up on uh, up on in front of me here. So I'm going to read to you the details of the case right now. <clears throat> so on October 28, 1981, 17 year old Kurt Silva departed for a Halloween party at a duplex. The party was composed of people from nearby Detroit, of which he was one of the youngest there, and people to which. He had never been acquainted with prior to this event. Uh, guests later commented that he had been drinking uh, Everclear, the tr strongest drink on the market and illegal in many parts of the United States. Uh, the news surprised his family and friends as they did not know him to be a hardened drinker. Also, his skinny build and lack of past drinking did not give him any high tolerance for the likes of Everclear. One party goer said that he took an intoxicated Kurt out doors for some fresh air, leaving him hanging on the, on the chain link fence near the duplex. When the guests returned shortly with Kurt's jacket, he had vanished. It was unknown if he had stumbled off into the back uh, country due to his junkard state, or if he had been abducted. When his mother later came looking for him, the tenant who rented the duplex stated that she had never seen him nor hosted any party. However, when police got involved, the hostess revised her statements. A pizza delivery boy who was interrogated by police said that the night of Kurt's disappearance he had delivered a large order to the duplex where he had heard uh, music and men and women making out. Uh, the, cause, the cause the tenant uh, to change her story uh, to the Silvas and the police that she indeed did host a party. This only served fuel to Mr. and Mrs. Silva's belief that something had happened to Kurt and the hostess had tried to cover her tracks. One day after he vanished, Kurt's parents uh, registered him as a missing child and papered the neighborhoods and local businesses uh, with flyers looking for him. Uh, one such business was a record store which was visited by a strange man who told the owner that it was a fruit that it was fruitless to have the missing child poster of Kurt and remarked, "Might as well take it down. He's going to be dead in a couple days." <clears throat> A sighting of a living Kurt came from a school friend of his who was en route to a job interview. The man was driving and saw him head towards a van with people who were not native to Newbury Heights. Uh, the man also reported hearing Kurt calling out, Hey Franco! Unfortunately, the friend did not suspect anything out of the ordinary as he was, aware of Kurt's, as he was unaware of Kurt's status as a missing person at the time of this, of occurrence, of this occurrence. The renter of the duplex later contacted Mrs. Silva, uh, stating that Kurt had slept on a cot in her basement. She was reluctant to believe her on the basis of her multiple lies, but Mr. Silva inspected the basement. He did not find Kurt in the basement nor of any of his personal belongings, but did find that the cot looked like it had been recently used. Six days after the party, three little boys were exploring a ravine near the Silva residence. They found Kurt's body, where he was wearing a bright yellow t-shirt which stood out uh, from the natural tones of the ground, as well as without shoes. Police could not find any assault. His body suffered no injuries except uh, a few minor scrapes and bruises as a result of being barefoot. Nor, poli nor could police find his right, uh, his right shoe, although his left shoe was wedged under a pile of rocks near his body. The cause of death could not be determined. Coroners later concluded that Kurt died naturally, but that is not accepted by the Silva family. Some believe that his death may be re related uh, to the death of another, another boy from that local area, Eugene Quebec, a 13-year-old boy who lived in the same neighborhood as the Silvas and whom Kurt had been acquainted with. Interestingly, Eugene was also found barefoot and his red shoe was never found. The authorities would like to identify a man named Franco who Kurt had been hanging out with in the days before the party. 
It is possible, but not determined, that he is the same person in the record store who had predicted Kurt would be found dead. On the same discovery of Kurt's body, the record star store owner, whom had been uh, told to search for him was pointless and was visited again by this man, had given her a bouquet of flowers with a card that read, Roses are red, the sky is blue, they found him dead, and they will find you dead too. Uh, she felt sufficiently intimidated by the jester and uh, reported it to the police, who arrested and interrogated the drifter. Police determined that this man was mentally and emotionally disturbed, but ruled him out as a suspect in Kurt's death. After his release from the police custody, he left Newburgh Heights, and he has not been seen since. So, you know, this is kind of a, a you know, it, it's hard to um, come up with a theory for this case, really, just because of, like, um, like all the different, like, uh, contradictions that have been made up in the, in the lies and stuff. Um, you know, I don't know, they say he was drinking Everclear, um, which, you know, from what I've heard, you know, and like it said in the uh, article, was a pretty strong drink or something like that. Uh, you know, I think what happened to Kurt is that, you know, he probably just stumbled off and was trying to find his way home. And then, uh, you know, he, he probably uh, kind of made his way to the ravine or something, and then, you know... Um, and then uh, passed out or, so or something like that. And then, you know, um, he, he may have passed away from the, uh, um, from the weather, you know, because, you know, it kind of gets cold around, uh, around October, and this was on October 28th. So, you know, it's, it was getting near to that time of year, you know, where, where it kind of begins to get cold. Hell, there's there's even snow on the ground sometimes around that time, but I don't think there was here. But, you know, I think he just passed away from, I don't know, maybe just from being out in that environment. And, you know, you know I don't know. And actually, I forgot to read this. Um, but, you know, as as the case had said, um, it's unsolved. It's still unsolved. Um, and unfortunately, Kurt, Kurt's mother, Dorothy Silva, died in 2014 without hearing any info on the case. Like, you know, that's pretty sad to hear, you know, because I remember, you know, I remember watching the, uh, segment, and, you know, you could just, you could just tell that it really hurt her, uh, deeply, that she didn't know about where, about what happened to Kurt, and, you know, she had done everything in her power to try and find him, and, you, you know, you could tell that she, uh, was definitely hurting over this, and the fact that she had no answers, uh, you know, that really sucks, and, you know, um, it doesn't say if, uh, if uh, Kurt's dad is still alive. I know he had a couple other brothers, I think, or something like that. Uh, let's see in the article here if that mentions it. Um, no, it doesn't say, but I, I know he's got brothers or something like that. So, you know, I, I definitely hope that someday that the dad and, the, and his, uh, and his, and his uh, siblings, you know, find, uh, find out what happened to him eventually, someday, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, uh, it definitely, it, that really sucks hearing that um, Mrs. Silva died, you know, uh, just because, you know, she she was, she seemed so upset about the kid, about this whole thing, and yeah, I really don't blame her, you know. Um, you know, I just, I, I hope she's at peace now, and, you know, maybe she's reunited with Kurt or something like that, you know. That's what I hope for, and, uh, you know, I actually kind of want to go through into another theory of this case. I think probably um, also what could have happened is Kurt could have spent the night at the duplex and it passed out. And from however much he was drinking, because you know Everclear is a, like I had stated, every, and the article had stated Everclear is a strong drink, so you know it could it could really screw you up. So I think what probably happened also. Like if he had, if he did uh, spend the night at the duplex, is that um, you know he probably passed out, and you know the uh, people at the party probably decided to you know just leave him down there for the night and let him sleep it off, and then when they went down there, uh, they saw that he was still passed out, probably thought that he had uh, died or something like that, and then uh, you know.
grabbed his body and put it in the ravine, so that's also a theory. So, you know, it could be either one of those, it could be neither of them, you know, I don't, I really don't know. But, you know, the fact that he had bruises on him kind of leads me to, or, yeah, I kind of lean to more, to, uh, more towards the uh, theory that, uh, you know, he had, he had just, he was looking for his way home, you know, he stumbled into that ravine or whatever, and he, he had passed out there, and, you know, he passed away from, uh, just the, uh, from the cold in the environment, you know, that's what I think happened. But, you know, I don't know if, I don't know if we'll ever know, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, you know, this case was, uh, one that I thought about doing for a while, you know. Kind of like the Danny Castellero case and Dave Box and, you know, other cases like this one, they always interest me because there's so many different ways that the case could go. There's so many theories which people could have. And, you know, I'm definitely interested to hear your guys' theories on this case. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, go back and check out all my other videos. Um, there'll definitely be more Unsolved Mysteries coming, you know. Uh, I've kind of been consumed by uh, wrestling lately, you know, there's been, there's just been so many things going on in the world with the wrestling world, so I've kind of been lacking uh, making Unsolved Mysteries, but, you know, I'm going to start to again, and, you know, I'm going to try and balance both now, I'm going to at least try to do both those things, you know, because it's, it's hard to do, uh, you know, different series when, you know, there's so many things going on in one thing and all this, so, but yeah, there'll definitely be more Unsolved Mysteries coming for sure, I just, you know, I gotta figure out what cases I want to do, but yeah, I really wanted to do this case, because, you know, there's just so many things, that, so many theories that could be presented, and, uh, you know, it's, it was always just an interesting case for me to do, and, uh, but yeah, you know, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, uh, comment, we can discuss the case in the comments, you can tell me your theories about it, uh, and you know, that's pretty much all I gotta say for right now, um, you know, I'll see you in the next one, and uh, we were it out.